Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I am Daniel Goodwin. And over there is John Lewandowski. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. It is now past January, so please, please, if you are a heavy supporter of ours, go check out the race team in which we sponsor. TNT Racing on Facebook. Uh, Team 24 otherwise, but TNT Racing on Facebook. Um, we post from our page on there every once in a while. So, um, but today we have a double. Uh, we got the Atlanta Gladiators taking on our former affiliate in the Florida Everglades. And Belleville came to town. All right, so the Atlantic Gladiators took on the Florida Everblades. Shots in the first period. Florida outshoots Atlanta 16 to 15. In the second period, Florida outshoots Atlanta 11 to 1. In the third period, Florida outshoots Atlanta 11 to 9. And in total, Florida outshoots Atlanta 38 to 25. On the power play, Atlanta goes 0 for 1 with 11 minutes, 4 infractions, while Florida goes 0 for 2 with 9 minutes, 3 infractions. Um, scoring in the first period at the 9.35 mark for the Everblades was Cam Morrison, assisted by Sean Jostling at the 17.47 mark. The Everblades score again with a goal from Tyler Cobran, assisted by Will Riley and Evan Boucher. Then in the second, at the 7.54 mark, the Everblades score again with a goal from Sean Jostling, assisted by Cam Morrison. All right, then scoring at the 18.10 mark. Thank you. I'm sorry. I was having issues. <laughs> um, Or at the 8.10, yes, at the 8.10 mark was Cody Sylvester. Um, then in the third, Cam Morrison scores with an assist from Joe Pendenza, former Emerald, and Stanislav Demon. All right. So Morrison had two, three points. Oh. You know, the game is you know. All right, here's the three stars of the game. Uh, third star of the game was Jocelyn. Second star of the game was Coburn. Uh, first star of the game was Morrison. In net for Florida was Tomier. He stopped 24 of 25. In net for Atlanta was Barone. He stopped 34 of 37. No, Butter. Butter didn't play. Okay. Uh, the uh, Cap Morrison's second Second goal, the one at the seventeen thirty-two mark, was an empty net. Okay. Um, you did the power play, correct? Yeah. Okay, that is all we got. Um. Then. Today, the Belleville Senators came to town. Um, shots on goal in the first period were 11 to 6 for Milwaukee. Shots on goal in the second period were 17 to 9 for Belleville. Shots on goal in the third period was 8 to 4 for Belleville. 
The headshots were four apiece in overtime, giving Belleville a total of 35 to 29. Belleville went one for five on the power play with three with six minutes, three infractions, while Milwaukee went 0 for 1 with five, 12 minutes, five infractions. Yes, we had one power play all game. Yeah. Scoring in the first was Mark Jankowski with his 12th with a session from Liam Foody, his third, and Adam Wellesby, his fourth. Scoring in the second. Hang on. I, I got to okay. after Jankowski. I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, then Jasper Wellesby scores his eighth with an assist from Cody Hodgson, his first point in eight years. Yep. Congratulations. First game back, too. Mm hmm. Um, also assisted by Fedor stretched off his 14th. Then Mark Jankowski gets a shorthanded goal, his 13th at the 333 mark, with an assist from LaRue, his 16th, and McEwen, his 10th. In the second period, there was a uh, penalty shot. August Angus Crookshanks took the shot. Yaroslav Askarov made the stop. And we continue. <coughs> All right. Then the second at the 1456 mark. Belleville gets on the board from Bakonji Imama, scoring his second of the year, assisted by Torin Pfizer, his second. Then at, in the third at the 1558 mark for Belleville, Angus Crookshank scores his 11th of the year on the power play. Assisted by Garrett Pilone, his 14th, and Matthew Highmore, his 12th. Then at the 1809 mark for Belleville, Tyler Boucher scores his second of the year, and that was unassisted. Then in overtime, there was no scoring, and we go to a shootout. All right. Shooting first for the Admirals was Cal O'Reilly, no goal. Garrett Pilon, no goal. Uh, Jordan Gross, goal. Yuri Smeagol. That's how it was pronounced. Um, no goal. Uh, Mark Jankowski, no goal. Igor Sokolov, goal. Um, that e that uh. Yusuf Parson no goal. Tyler Boucher, no goal. Zachary LaRue, goal. Uh, former Rockford Icehawk, Matthew Highmore, goal. Uh, then Liam Foudy scored. And Zach Opunk, uh, oh, Ostapchuk. 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 I'm trying to remember how to pronounce it, but yes. Um... The Admirals win in a shootout, three to two in the shootout. Final score of four to three. Admirals send fans home with free tickets. Your three stars of the game. Third star of the game was Carmen Graval with no points, but he did have a fight, which he won. Uh, that's also because he got boarded. I wouldn't have taken that either. <laughs> Um, uh, Tyler Butcher had a goal and Mark Jankowski had two. Um, Yaroslav Askarov stops 32 of 35. Well, Kevin Mandelazen. Uh, stops 25 of 28. Head coach for Belleville is David Bell. Uh, assistant coach Chris Dennis and Nathan McIver. Uh, head coach for Milwaukee is Carl Taylor. Assistant coach Scott Ford and Greg Wallow. Attendance at the UW Panther Arena was 4,371. Your referees were Peter Tardis and Adam Tobias. Your linesmen were Brandon Grillo and Russell Jordan. The Admirals are back in action on Friday. Well, I believe... 
Nashville plays tomorrow. Almost positive. Don't they play the Wild tomorrow? Correct. Um. Yes. So the Admirals play the Wild tomorrow. Um. In the first period, um, Angelo did leave the game. I did not see him return. Um, I believe there was one other injury. I'm not sure. But it looked like that bench was a little short at times. Yeah. So... We'll see what happens there. Um, it should be interesting to see what comes around tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, the Admirals are back in action on Friday. Well, the Admirals have a post-game concert of Tesla, which I am not staying for. Just not my cup of tea. It's not that I don't like them. It's just not my cup of tea. They're, uh... So... All righty. Um, let's do this. All right. Group Salt Lake City group formally requests NHL to initiate expansion process. The Smith Entertainment Group, the parent company of the NBA's Utah Jazz, has formally requested an NA National Hockey League initiate their expansion process for purpose of bringing an NHL team to Utah. The SEG, which is obviously the Smith Entertainment Group, told the league. It it can welcome a franchise to say Salt Lake as soon as next season. Using the Delta Center as the home of the Jazz as its interim home while the original build while they build a new arena for the Jazz and this hockey team. Yeah. <laughs> the NHL appreciates the interest in the Smith group. Of bringing hockey to Utah, conversations over the course of the past two years, we have been impressed by it. Ryan and Ashley Smith's commitment to their community and their passion and vision for Utah, not only as a hockey market, but as a permanent sports and entertainment destination. Utah is a promising market. We look forward to continuing our discussion. Deputy Commissioner confirmed that Bill Daly on June 3rd or confirm that on June third the Stanley Cup Finals will that will begin. That means we could have an expansion draft right before the draft. Yeah. Um. Dang, not only are they trying to work on an NHL team, but they are trying to work on Salt Lake City as an Olympic bid down the line. Yeah. That is so awesome. That what what is your thoughts on, on that for for the league? I I know that Seattle, we knew that would work. Um I, mean, I think it would be good for Utah. I, I do. Uh, I think it's well overdue, honestly. They've been wanting a team for years. No, I I will say I saw a couple people 
showing some distasteful stuff and those people I will I, I'm not going to call them directly out but if I see anything like this on our pages and I'm just saying our pages you will be removed from our pages and banned effective immediately if we talk about Utah and you mention Mormons once you're gone I'm just sorry you mentioned their drinking policies and, the, and that God, if you mention the stuff in Canada, God, uh, we right now we are not at a position to talk about it as we are not involved in it. What we know is what we know. Yeah. And what we know, you all know. All right. Mm -hmm. So no point in us saying it. <clears throat> all I got to say is, if this is my take on it. If it's the truth, then they should be punished. If it's a lie, then she should be punished. Just saying. Because these guys all lost money from their jobs. You know? They're taking personal leaves of absence to do this. So there's some form of guilt, I would say. I don't know. My personal opinion is I I don't know. Ah, man. I don't know enough. Right, we That's don't. That's my opinion. I don't know enough. And the news we're getting isn't enough. Um. Now, to my recollection, that the 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 players involved are the only players involved. Also, Atlanta is moving towards an expansion team as well. What is your thoughts on the NHL going back to Atlanta for now a third time? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it hasn't worked the last two. <clears throat> I will say this, that the last time wasn't their fault. No. It wasn't. was on their owner. Right. That was not their fault. And it's not also not Atlanta, the city's fault for someone coming in and swooping up the team. Um, now, am I excited about it? Yes. Am I a little worried about that the league might get a little watered down talent-wise? It is starting to feel that way. A little bit. Uh, but we'll see where we go. I mean, if Atlanta comes back and the Wolves aren't their affiliate, then there's something wrong. But we'll see what happens. You know what else? I'd like I'd like Utah to bring in the Jazz or the Grizzlies to the A. Just bring up Utah the Grizzlies to the A. Oh, or, yeah. or just make them the end team. Find an A somewhere else. Um, well, Parson did not look good today. But Hodgson did. Yeah. I was actually surprised. Ought to be interesting to see where things go. All right. Um. It, it's very interesting. Um, like I said, congratulations to him on getting that point. I I know that is. That's got to be something special to him. Yeah. Um.
All right. Um, Patrick Waugh. Now, we've talked about this a little bit, but he's returning to Montreal as the coach on Thursday, which is tomorrow. Yeah. In seven minutes here. Um, recording time. Um. Jean Gabriel Peugeot said he deserves it. Or, I'm sorry, they should roll out the red carpet for him. This is his quotes. He deserves it. He earned it. He's famous there, not only because he's a winner, but I think he's a great competitor, a gamer. I know all Quebecers love that personality. Wah is unquestioned, an unquestioned icon in Montreal. Arguably the most popular living former Canadian player. Jonathan Marcheseau of the Golden Knights said this. He must be one of the most recognizable people in Quebec. That was one of the Golden Knights players' comments. When you think about all the famous people, he has to be the most famous guy in Quebec in the province. The Canadians retired his number 33 at the Bell Center in 2008. Um I I know that's that's kind of um a special moment for him, and I know that those guys are going to go to battle for him. Um, <laughs> that dude's huge. Uh, one of the top prospects to look at in the draft, number 13, Adam Jer Jaco. Jaco is a 6'6 uh, center. A uh, very, very, very good player. The skills come, skills game coming up soon for that. Um, trying to see if I've forgotten anything else. Um. Saturday, we have a double for you. Monday, we have a game for you. Tuesday, we have a game for you. Wednesday, we have a game for you. Friday, we have a game for you. And then me and John are going to take some time off. Uh, we do not, do not cover the All-Star game. Or warning, no point covering it. It's more for the league and the league's charities and all that stuff. Um, I will say this, if something happens, obviously we're here. We do pay attention. Um, if something major is announced, we'll be here to talk about it. But for the remainder of tonight, me and John would like to be done before midnight. So, I would like to bid you adieu. Bye.